TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel and the Gulf Kingdom of Bahrain sign a joint communique officially formalizing bilateral intentions to establish full diplomatic relations between Jerusalem and Manama. Palestinian Islamists launch a rocket toward Israel's southern communities, forcing thousands of Israelis into bomb shelters. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announces Israel's gradual exit from a nationwide closure after morbidity rates throughout most of the country indicate a positive downward trend. Israel and the Gulf Kingdom of Bahrain signed a joint communique officially formalizing bilateral intentions to establish full diplomatic relations between Jerusalem and Manama. Senior American and Israeli delegations, headed respectively by U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Steven Mnuchin and Israeli National Security Advisor Meir Ben Shabbat, traveled for a one-day visit to Bahrain yesterday, prior to which U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman proclaimed that the latest of U.S. brokered peace-building efforts is, in effect, bringing the Bible back to life. We're here in the land of Abraham to take the next step on the Abraham Accords. Uh, as you all know, Abraham gave birth to two great nations, many nations, but in the Jewish nation and the Arab nation. Those nations were, were rivals, uh, but as we all know from the book of Genesis, they reconciled some 35 years, 3,500 years ago. Today, we're bringing the Bible back to life the children of Isaac and the children of Ishmael are reconciling once again in this holy land and in Bahrain and in the United Arab Emirates as well. The senior delegations went on to board El Al Flight 973, which is part of an El Al 737 fleet equipped with the Sea Music anti missile system as the Israeli airliner made its way over Jordanian and Saudi airspace to the capital of Bahrain, where the kingdom's top diplomat warmly welcomed the Israeli and American dignitaries upon their anticipated arrival. Today, we build on that historic occasion at the White House last month, taking the next steps to implement the declaration in support of peace and the Abraham Accords. We do so in conviction that this approach of engagement and cooperation is the most effective, the most sustainable means to bring about a genuine and lasting peace, one which safeguards the rights of the Middle East's peoples. And we do so with the optimism that such a peace will bring a new stability and prosperity to the region. من دواعي سروري وفخري تراوس البعصة الإسرائيلية للمباحثة التي ستجرى اليوم في البحرين باسم رئيس الحكومة الإسرائيلية من يمين التنياو أود أن أعبر عن تقديره العميق لصاحب الجلالة مالك البحرين حامد بن عيسى آل خليفة على قياداته الشجاعة وعلى رؤيته بعيدة المدى. The Israeli National Security Advisor Meir Ben Shabbat further insisted that the newly established relations will serve both nations on several fronts while reiterating Jerusalem's deep appreciation of the United States, which facilitated the historic occasion. From the airport, the delegates joined their Bahraini hosts for an official signing ceremony that was held at the Ritz Hotel in the city. Alongside the main communique, Several memorandums of understanding were also signed between the two nations in the sectors of trade, telecommunications, finance, banking, air services, and agriculture. Subsequently, Jerusalem also submitted an official request to open an Israeli embassy in the Bahraini capital, Manama. Turning to the Gaza Strip, where the Islamist Hamas organization urged all rival Palestinian factions to join forces for the purpose of confronting 
what it claimed to be plans to liquidate the Palestinian cause, most notably by means of the American devised deal of the century. In an interview to the Hamas-controlled Al-Aqsa television channel, Deputy Chief of the internationally recognized terror group Saleh al aghouri insisted that ongoing talks between rival Palestinian factions in both the West Bank and Gaza Strip are bearing fruit. The Hamas deputy chief went on to condemn Saudi Arabia's prince Bandar bin Sultan bin Abdulaziz al Saud for terming the Palestinian leadership incompetent and weak, insisting that such comments by Arab leaders are meant to weaken the unified Palestinian position and exert pressure on it. Furthermore, Al Aruri also seized the opportunity to condemn the Abraham Normalization Accords between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain. He stressed that the accords run contrary to the 2002 Saudi-led Arab Peace Initiative, which ironically, Hamas had had repeatedly condemned on numerous occasions. Nevertheless, the Islamist leader did not shy away from his organization's aspiration to annihilate the Jewish state. al aghouri reaffirmed Hamas's choice of an armed resistance, as he called it, against Israel, which he claimed, quote, managed to end the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories, citing as an example the Israeli withdrawal from Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, Lebanon, and the Gaza Strip. In related news, Palestinian Islamists launched a rocket from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities over the weekend. Rocket alert sirens sounded in the Israeli border community of Netiva Asara, forcing its residents to rush into bomb shelters within the IDF Home Front Command's instructed 15 seconds. The IDF spokesperson's unit confirmed that one projectile was indeed launched from the Gaza Strip toward Israeli territory. Thankfully, there were no reports of injuries or damage. The IDF further confirmed to TV7 that no retaliatory response was conducted and stopped short from providing additional information. And while the Palestinian leadership continues to voice rhetoric regarding the Arab world's rapprochement with the Jewish state, Director General of the Palestine Liberation Organization, Saib Erekat, was taken by an Israeli ambulance to an undisclosed hospital in the city of Tel Aviv after he was diagnosed with the corona contagion and subsequently his condition evidently worsened. A Palestinian source confirmed to TV7 that Erekat, who also serves as the Palestinian chief negotiator, was taken from his home in the West Bank city of Jericho on a stretcher. The transfer to an Israeli medical center was made in light of Erekat's vulnerability to the disease after he underwent a lung transplant in the United States in 2017. In other news, Prime Minister B. Netanyahu announced Israel's gradual exit from a nationwide closure after morbidity rates throughout most of the country indicated a positive downward trend. Speaking from the central Israeli town of Bet Dagan, the Israeli premier emphasized the need for compliance to the government-enacted measures, including from less adherent communities, namely the ultra-Orthodox public. אנחנו צריכים למנוע את הזליגה של התחלואה מהערים האדומות, לא נשארו הרבה, מספרם ירד, וזה דווקא כתוצאה מזה שכן כיבדו את הכללים. ועכשיו אני קורא לכל ראשי הציבור בציבור החרדי לקיים את הכללים, לדאוג שהם יכובדו, אבל בכל מקרה נצטרך לעשות גם אכיפה, הגברת אכיפה, כולל להבטיח שהסגרים הם מהודקים, וגם בתוך הערים אנחנו ניתן קנסות ככל שהדבר נדרש. אני הייתי שמח שהדבר הזה ייעשה בהידברות, בהבנה הדדית, כי המטרה שלנו היא לדאוג לכל אזרחי ישראל, לכולם, בלי יוצא מן הכלל. ולכך אנחנו צריכים גם אכיפה וגם הסכמה, גם משמעת וגם uh, את העבודה החשובה שהמשטרה עושה בתנאים קשים. אנחנו בעיקר מתמקדים בסגרים ובקנסות, יש עוד עבודה לעשות. הכי חשוב, הכי חשוב. שכולם יבינו שאנחנו פועלים למען הבריאות של כל אזרחי ישראל. 
It is important to know that several cities, towns, communities, and neighborhoods where morbidity continues to spread uncontrollably remain under police enforced lockdown. All of the referred to areas under lockdown, including the cities of Nebrak, Beitar Elite, and Modin Elite, as well as several neighborhoods in Jerusalem and elsewhere, are all predominantly populated by the ultra Orthodox sector. Nevertheless, despite repeated calls on rabbis to encourage their communities to adhere to health authorities, compliance is seemingly limited to say the least. You could see hundreds of people already this morning. The minute they opened the doors here, people are coming, hundreds, and I believe in an hour, two hours, you could see thousands of people are waiting already for weeks to come and pray in this holy place. Although the corona they had no choice, during the corona, people were at home, but now we believe that God will help us. As part of the first steps to reopen Israel from approximately three weeks lockdown, the government allowed some small businesses to reopen, as well as national parks, beaches and kindergartens. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up the Kingdom of Bahrain in prayer for its salvation and peace. In addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. Separately, I would like to reiterate my deep appreciation for all of you who keep us in your prayers, as well as support TV7 Israel financially. Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.